Bernie Sanders was questioning White House budget chief Nick Mulvaney in regard to Donald Trump's budget proposal. Now, for anyone who's been paying attention, you know that the budget proposal would cut funding for a lot of programs that underprivileged Americans rely on while giving the wealthiest Americans more tax cuts. Now, of course, this is something that Bernie Sanders is not too pleased about, which is why he took the opportunity to ask budget chief Nick Mulvaney some pretty difficult questions that Mulvaney kind of stumbled with. So let's take a look at the first video where Sanders specifically talks about these tax cuts for the wealthy. Mr. Mulvaney, as you know, the United States today has more income and wealth inequality than any major country on earth. Top one tenth of 1% now owns almost as much wealth as the bottom 90%. 52% of all new income today is going to the top 1%. But your budget thinks that it is good public policy to provide $52 billion in tax breaks to the wealthiest family in this country, a family already worth $128 billion. So my question is pretty simple, and I want you to tell the American people why you think it is a good idea to give three trillion dollars in tax breaks to the top one percent at a time when the rich are becoming much richer, while at the same time you're going to throw 17 million children in this country off of health insurance because of the unconscionable cuts that you are making to Medicaid, why you're going to throw seniors in the state of Wyoming or the state of Vermont off the Meals on Wheels program, maybe the one nutritious program that they get a day, why you're gonna throw women and low income babies off of the WIC program at a time when infant mortality rates in this country was already high. Do you really think it is a great idea to tell a low income pregnant woman that you're gonna take away the WIC program, take away nutrition programs from children in order to give a massive tax break of $52 billion to the Walton family. Please explain your logic to the American people. Damn. Just so fiery. It's so good. I want to know what Mulvaney was writing. He's like, like please, FML, please FML, please FML. Get me out of here. <laughs> yeah. I am extremely uncomfortable with this right. man yelling at me right now. Yeah, like, what it are was the notes? so good. What I know, I know. Pretending like you're writing notes. And by the way, I'm being a little unfair because maybe he is writing notes. Like, oh, wait, look into the fact that this would give. <laughs> 52 billion in tax breaks to the Walton family. Is that really true? Is that He's really aware. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, that was an incredible line of questioning from Bernie Sanders. That is the type of, um, I don't want to say performance, because it's not really a performance, but that's the type of behavior by Bernie Sanders that I think made a lot of people want him to be the Democratic nominee. You know, why so many young people wanted to support him and wanted to see him win the election. And he's a fighter and it's it's amazing. So look, that's just the beginning of it, okay? Obviously, we didn't even give you guys a chance to check how Mulvaney responded. So let's go to the next video where you will see how he responds and judge for yourself whether or not you believe anything he says. WIC serves all the projected participants. There's no change there. Meals on Wheels is not reduced at all. The change that we make is through the CBDG program, which you eliminate. The block grant thing. So you eliminate the block grant. You tell me that doesn't that funds the program. You tell me that doesn't have an impact. No, the program is funded, Senator, through the old age or senior nutrition program. I think through HHS, which we don't change. No, that's not true. No, it is true actually. The CDBG program is a block grant to the states, and some states do choose choose to use some and of that you eliminate that wheels, program wheels, and that total right, the bottom line is the t- senator i mean if you uh, Go ahead, answer the, the question the total money for meals on wheels that comes from cdbg is 3% that's it yeah, and i don't know how you can possibly contend that we're but going But you to are eliminating the program that funds not only meals on wheels but many other programs at the discretion of governors and, and banks. I would be more than happy to have a long discussion about CDBGs. You asked about Medicaid as well. Um, the slashing of, of Medicaid, the dramatic cuts to Medicaid, um, is a slower growth rate in Medicaid. Medicaid spending goes up every Yeah, but so does health care inflation. We go through these games every single year. Inflation is going up a lot faster than the money that you're putting in. What I love is how prepared he is to respond to the games that 
politicians play in general, right? Um, because you can skew the argument and, and kind of twist the argument in a way that makes it seem like, no, no, it's no big deal. We're not, we're not really cutting that much from these programs that help the poor. But you know, Bernie came in prepared, knowing what he's talking about, and that's important. That's important. So I, I'm going to disagree a little mm -hmm. bit. I, I obviously I love the passion from Bernie, and I love the intent. I think that politically he gave Mulvaney, who is a, a loathsome, unctuous, repulsive liar. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be too strong, but uh, <laughs> uh, he's a horrible, horrible guy. Uh, politically, he may well love his children. Um, but uh, <laughs> by being specific <laughs> on things like Meals on Wheels, mm -hmm. he allows Mulvaney to get into the minutia of Meals on Wheels and gives him arguably a rhetorical win on, hey, we're cutting 3% from Meals on Wheels, how can you argue that this is? And on the Medicaid thing where he's like, hey, it's just increasing, it's increasing at a slower rate. And then Bernie, to me, ends up being defensive as opposed to, again, an overall no shift in tone, no shift in anger when income inequality is getting worse and worse, when one tenth of 1% own as much as 90% of everybody else, what kind of monsters end up giving 52 billion to the Walton families and $3 trillion to the richest Americans in the country? Who obviously, why isn't that money being directed to the poorest Americans, to middle class mm -hmm. Americans, to programs that work, rather than allowing him to specifically retort Certain points, which again, Mulvaney's the director of the Office of Management and Budget. He's he's uh, he's going to have he he's not going to be unprepared completely mm -hmm. to to defend his points. Right. I mean, he's not unprepared because he has his talking points prepared, right. and and mm -hmm. he you know try to utilize them in that argument. But look, right now what we're doing is a play by play, and I think if you do a play by play, there are moments where Bernie comes off as stronger, and there are moments where Mulvaney comes out. A little stronger, but not in my opinion, not really. I think the saddest part about all of this is I think the vast majority of Americans are never even going to see this exchange. Right. They're not going to even be aware of of Mulvaney's arguments and his, you know, persistent lies on on these you know, issues, which is the worst part about all of this. But I want to give you a chance to jump in. No, I think I think to your point, I think. You know, when you talk about inequality, I think to Bernie's credit is that you have to put a face on what inequality looks like. So when you mention WIC, when you mention Meals on Wheels, it, I mean, granted, if voters ever see this, it lets them know how they'll personally be impacted. Because sometimes when you speak too generally, um, people tend to conflate um, other folks with inequality as opposed to themselves. Um, you get Meals on Wheels, right? You're affected by Medicaid and Medicare, and it's not just those other people. So I think it is a delicate dance that you have to do when you talk about inequality, is also personalize it for folks who think that that's them. That's actually a really good point because just today, CNN ran a fascinating story about an elderly woman who voted for Trump. And based on his budget proposal, if it goes through, her SSI benefits would just be gone. And that's what she relies on to live. And so she was interviewed by CNN and she was like, I didn't expect him to go after you know my safety net. I didn't expect him to go after a program that helps me. And so being, I know it's it's frustrating, right? Because this is the kind of stuff, you know, working in the news side of things, this is the kind of stuff that we've been reporting on over and over again and trying to get it through everyone's heads that these people are not looking out for you. But mm -hmm. regardless, I think it is important to mention the specific programs that are gonna experience cuts. Um, I think it is important to personalize it because we're like living in this weird society where it's us versus them with everything. Mm -hmm. and, and it can't be that way. All of us are gonna be impacted in some negative fashion if we allow this type of budget proposal to go through. Um, there is one last video that I wanna uh, toss to. This is where Sanders is uh, demanding a Mulvaney answer to why the richest people in this country get a tax break, whereas the poorest people will be hurt the most. Take a look. Bottom line is, tell me, I, let me get back to one question. Sure. Why do you think the Walton family needs a $52 billion tax break? My guess is that you're, you're basing that assertion on the only tax detail that we have in the budget. The repeal of the repeal estate of tax, the, uh, the exactly. Repeal. Right, um, and if we wanna have a talk about why we're repealing that, I'd be more than happy to do Good. that. Good, let's tell me. Because ordinary people are paying more. No, ordinary people do not have a wealth of $128 billion. The average, That's not an ordinary person. The average increase across this nation since You're not the answering the question. The question is, the, answer the question. 
The wealthiest family in America gets a $52 billion tax break as a result of the appeal of the estate tax. That's correct. Tell the American people why you think that's good when you cut Medicaid and you cut programs for kids. We, we, we don't cut Medicaid. We're talking about repealing Obamacare. The results Probably that you mentioned... Probably 23 million people off of health insurance. That's right. The, the, which is a CBO number that I think you just agreed could be wrong at the no, I didn't agree to that at all. Okay. That we repeal Obama. Why does a billionaire family get a $52 billion tax break? Because Please we, tell the American people. Because we think it's wrong that real ordinary folks lose coverage. And we want to get rid ordinary of Ordinary people. Is yes. the Walton family an ordinary family? Uh, no, they're not. They're extraordinary. But ordinary people are losing coverage today under Obama. I ask you why the wealthiest that. family in America is getting a $52 billion tax break. And I'm answering break. the question by saying because we repeal Obamacare. No, you end the estate tax, which applies to the top two tenths of one percent. Um, Senator, okay, if that, if that well, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I thought the assumption was we were looking at the tax, the, the tax reductions that are contained in Obamacare. Repeal. No, that's not what we're talking about. No, tax. no, no. Okay, we're talking about the repeal of the estate tax, which All you right. just mentioned. Um, the budget assumes a deficit-neutral tax plan, because when we wrote the budget, we did not have nearly enough specifics to assume what you're assuming, which is the specific reductions. Yes, the proposals that the White House published about three or four weeks ago, the principles that we set forth, does include a reduction of the estate tax. Repeal of the estate tax, sir. You said, yeah, you know, you're absolutely right. It is a repeal of the estate tax, but I think it's, it's mathematically impossible to take those general principles and assume a direct impact on a particular family. You no, can't that's do it. Not. Nobody can do it. I've, I've seen estimates from groups that say, oh, it's going to add no, that's not, that's, by $2 trillion dollars to $10 trillion. People no, just that's really not numbers. true. Well, uh, that one I'll give to Bernie. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. the, uh, but again, that was specific. He gave him, mm -hmm. there were fewer ways. That he had The other one gave him too many outs. Yeah. But that's a, uh, and I don't want to seem nitpicky, but that's an issue I think that Bernie has, is that you give him enough, you fire at enough things, and then you just respond to one. But there, I mean, you know, he's like, oh, you're talking about the estate tax? Like, I said the estate tax 12 times. Everybody right. knows we're talking about uh, the estate tax. Um, and of course, as we know, there is no argument for the estate tax that affects regular Americans because even now and what Democrats would ultimately agree to are exemptions that I think now are in the neighborhood of, I don't have it in front of me, but it's like $3 million per person or $6 million. So unless your estate, you're like tax free through five or $6 million of the estate. So family farms, that makes them exempt. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about, you gotta have, before you get an ounce of estate tax, mm -hmm. you gotta be inheriting more than like $7 million. Yeah. So we're not, you know, or in some cases it might be a little bit lower, but I mean, millions and millions of dollars come to you tax free. If you're getting, if your parents die their house and it's worth $726,000, you're not taxed on you're it. You're not taxed on it, yeah. exactly, exactly. I just, I love that exchange. I love how strong Bernie is. I love that he continues to fight even though he's not campaigning for anything right now. That's what we need. We need politicians that are actually looking out for those who are powerless, who don't have anyone you know, voicing their concerns. Our reporter Jordan Chatton broke the Donna Brazil story. He was right, she just apologized for it. Help us get more reporters like that. You're the one responsible for that. Thank you and let's do more right now at tytnetwork.com slash go.